Hey, everybody, it's Patrick Scolas with another exciting Banyan podcast of Tire Tracks. I'm joined today with Dan Contreras of Arc Freight Services and not to be confused with Arc Best. So that's the want to make sure we got that. Dan, thank you very much for joining me today. No, Patrick, glad to be here. Really appreciate it. Now, Dan is one of the, uh, as uh, the person helping me with the podcast and a few other people I've introduced him to, one of the nicest people you can meet and one of the great people to talk to. Um, you and I had a, a pleasure of meeting at our Connect 23 conference. Um, thanks so much for A, B, and there and taking the time to talk with us today. No, um, it was a great it was a great experience. Uh, it, actually, to be honest with you, it was the first time I'd been to one of those. Being that previously I was uh, with Sire Motor Freightline, mm-hmm. so we never we had never participated in, in anything like that. So it was great. I, I loved the experience. That's awesome. And and like we had just talked about before, I pressed the record button. His touch in Cleveland helped us beat the 49ers to get revenge for his Cowboys. So Absolutely. it's all 100% science right there. So That's thank you, Dan. 100%. Go Brownies. <laughs> That's right. There we go. Um, so I want to start a little bit with Dan. Um, you know, we met and we talked, but I don't know who you are. You just mentioned you came from Saya. What's your background look like? Uh, well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's a long trajectory that I've been in the freight business. I started uh, back in 1987 here in El Paso, Texas. I was born that year. So that shows how much more you're going to know about all of freight than I ever will. Well, that just made me feel a whole lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I, I you started, still have, you still have hair. So <laughs> take, take that one. It, well, uh, I'm getting there. So man, it, <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's gray. I'll tell you that it is uh, the only reason full. it looks, it looks uh, kind of black is because of the the shine of the, the the hair products. But there you go. I started in '87 with uh, Miles Group here. Um, Miles 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 Group is an, uh, a great company here locally in El Paso. Uh, the original founder uh, Rudy Miles he started out as the uh, customs broker. Okay. So I went to work for them, and they were agents for a company called National Payback. So back then we were doing uh, the um, the piggyback service on rail. Okay. Before the the containers started taking off, and that 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 doesn't even exist anymore. Um, for uh, for what used to be with Santa Fe and uh, UPS and our, I mean UP Railroad. So I worked for them for a couple of years. Then uh, we became agents. Uh, National piggyback got bought out by American President Lines. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get hired directly by APL, uh, transferred to Laredo. And during that time, I was working uh, Laredo and Mexico City for APL. So I was always going back and forth. Uh, Pretty much, you could say I lived in a hotel in Mexico City for about a year, just going back and forth. Uh, That sounds roomy. Yeah. uh, Well, at least I didn't have to do my bed every day, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they cleaned up for it. No washing dishes. You know, it was (laughs) was great, you know, especially because I was so young at the time. Yeah. Uh, So I did that. I was with them for about five years, five, six years. And then I went to work uh, for a company called Air Express International. Okay. uh, I opened up their warehouse uh, facility in, in Laredo. That was uh, an experience of its own. Um, Came had, some, had, had you had ever, ever opened up a warehouse or anything like that before? No, it was kind of trial by fire. It was trial by fire. Then it's, it's hilarious because six months, seven months into it, my boss who had hired me quit. <laughs> yeah, it was it was chaotic. And then uh, that's when uh, the peso had devalued it really bad. So it was, it was, it was hard. It was just a, a hard experience. So... Moved, had to move to San Antonio. Yeah, how do you bounce back from something like that? Because it yeah, sounds it, that could be a real dump, like it, as far as a, a morale hit. Yeah, oh, it was, and then you know, no one knew what was going on, and um, so it it was just. But met some great people. Uh, okay, to this date, I still stay in touch with a lot of them from Mexico because we were doing a lot of uh, work with Mexico City, uh, mm-hmm. the office they had out there. So it, it helped me expand my my connections with good people and and good network networking and resources. Uh, so from there, I went to work for um, Southwest Motor Transport. That's how I got yeah. into the LTL business. Okay. Uh, the back then, who was the president of the company? I he um, I met him when he was at ABF, and uh, good guy. He's also from El Paso, Chris Withers. 
I, he's retired already. He's not, he's not in this, in this business anymore, but, uh, Chris is a great guy. He gave me a chance to, uh, to go work for him in San Antonio, uh, after that fiasco with what had yeah. happened at the previous company. And I started in sales and this was really the first time Patrick, I had done outside sales and terrifying uh, at first. Yeah, it, it really <laughs> was. Uh, I'm telling you and living in a new city. Cause I, you know, I, I would, I just been in San Antonio for a couple of years, for a couple of months. So after I got trained, I remember that first week that I was on my own, I got lost, almost had a bad accident. And then one of the few calls that I went into, they, they, the guy just got up and told me never to show up. I, I had to leave his office. I thought he was going to hit me. He was so pissed at me. I had oh, no. no. Yeah, it was crazy because I had no idea what was going on. I was a new kid on the block, right? So, yeah. You're like, hey, nice to meet you. And he's like, don't you ever show up here again. <laughs> yeah, no, Um, I, I I cut my teeth doing some of that uh, outside sales and door to door. And uh, yeah, there's for for all the the wins you remember there's a crap ton of why am i doing this who why do i why do i hate this why do i why do i hate myself so much to do this over and over again but yeah yeah i i felt at that point i thought this is not for me <laughs> um but i i i stuck it out yeah and you're into that uh saya came in mm -hmm. to, and um i met back then who, who the person that inter interviewed me rick he's really super cool guy um gave me an opportunity to go work for saya and i loved the 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 company you know it, mm -hmm. it was a small regional company back then we had a uh, 11 state coverage and then it just started growing funny. if i was just say funny to think of saya and small regional company in the same sentence just because i've only been in the space for three years here and you know that's that's not what i would use to describe them no no man when i walked in it was a small it was a very small wonderful company great people and a lot of them are still there mm -hmm. um I, I miss that's one of the things i do miss is, is uh, great relationships that i developed that while i was at saya and uh, rick uh, I remember our marketing uh, vice president, Sally Bocos, wonderful lady. They said, hey, listen, we want to open up Mexico. They knew I had some experience. I had helped SMT with some stuff that they were doing in Mexico. So they put me in with Mexico. And um, 20 years later, you know, we we had gone through a lot and it, we we grew it to a you know, nice, it was small. It, it, Mexico is it has its challenges and you have to have a lot of resources and push behind it to make it work. But we grew it. We, it was, it was a, a great time. And, uh, then in 2015, my wife got pregnant with our little girl. Yeah. Congratulations. And how many are you up to now? Just the one? Uh, three. Well, yes, three. We have three. Okay. Uh, 30 year old, a 22 year old and a seven year old. There you go. All right. So you got a, you got a fun get what you for, forgot how much fun it was in between and decided to have another one there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you can call it that, but <laughs> you, got, man, you got bored, huh? <laughs> you know what? What's hilarious is I kept telling my wife at 55, it's it. I'm going to retire and we can just coast it. And oh man, I was like, now I'm going to work till I'm 85, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> no but greater was, motivation the, than children. Yeah, it, it was the best blessing because, you know, raising boys and raising a little girl. You love your kids the same. There is the, the love is there, but man, it's different. You know? I, I I can believe that. I mean, I, I know how my dad, you know, he like he loves me and my brother. But, you know, my my sister is daddy's little girl. You know, my my stepdaughter. And then I just had my my child, my, uh, my little girl, I, yep. She's, you know, she, she's just cooing and about this big, but like, I, yeah, I can't imagine treating her the same way I would a, a boy by any means. Oh, no. Um, but no. Um, so yeah. So you were with Saya then what, how did you get to arc freight services? Is that something you, you jumped in from the start or somebody came to you to talk to you about this opportunity? No, I, uh, I, I kind of got out of SIA because things had changed a lot. Now it was a, a very successful corporation, mm -hmm. but their 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 thought process of what my role was going to be was going to be was going to require a lot of traveling. And with my with my newborn, I I did, just didn't want to miss up on that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a young father, you don't you you don't you don't appreciate a lot of things as, as a father. And uh, at that, at that point in my life, I figured not, not worth it. Um, 
I didn't start Arc right away. I kind of went and helped out a, a buddy with his uh, uh, freight company. Okay. Helped him out for about a year. And uh, COVID hits. Things were not going as as I, as they had mentioned they were going to go for me. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm just going to do this on my own. Yeah. So, uh, in 2021, January of 2021, uh, we spun it off. Uh, fortunately, the group that I had in Mexico with me, from my IT guys to marketing to everyone, they said, man, we'll go with you. We'll, we'll join you. And uh, here we are. Uh, it's, um, yeah. it's been a great ride. And it, it's, it's, it has its challenges. I mean, but, what doesn't? But the, the thing that's helped us so much is the, the time that I was able to spend in Mexico, the context, the resources, the networking that we did, it's, they're all with me. Uh, and one of the things that I've done throughout that time is, I've made sure that I I respected the people I worked with from a vendor to a carrier to an employee. And we have great relationships. I mean, I don't think you can last 20 years or more and and continue using these people to help you become successful, you know? And that's and that's something that I hear with no matter who I talk to, is though logistics in general is a giant industry, it's a very small group of personalities. Like you said, you had a few names there, whether it was Saya or Southwest. And, you know, there's probably a bunch of people listening that know those names, still know those people or, you know, had conversations with them in the past. Um, And that, and it's just awesome because, you know, I'm from a, a technology platform and you, a lot of times you think, and especially you guys, you guys are technically advanced too. And a lot of times with that, there's the thought of you don't need relationships. You uh-huh. don't, you know what I mean? Like it's let the let the tech do the work. But that within logistics, you can't, regardless of how much tech you have, the relationship and the personalities that you deal with never it doesn't go away. No, um, don't. and that's and that's one thing that I I have become a very clear reoccurring theme with everyone I talk to. And it's, it's almost, it's almost heartwarming because it means that as long as we continue to do what's best for the people we work for and work with, you know, you'll have support with whatever you're dealing with. Oh so, yeah. You know, and the other thing Patrick is with social networking, with the social media platforms, yeah. like, the world just shrunk. Now it's, it's so easy to, to get to reconnect. Caught. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I have a, I have a buddy reach back at a Facebook messenger I hadn't talked to in about twenty years, and we're talking about where our families are, and it was out of the blue. And if it, you know, back in the day, I'd been like, I don't have that guy's number. I'm gonna forget about that guy, you know, until the next time we randomly run into each other. Yeah, um, true. but true. W- but with that, why why start Arc Freight Services? What was the gap? What did you think you could do better? Where what was the value proposition as you were coming to the table? We, and you touched base on it a little bit. When, um, there, there are many, many great companies that, that will provide a service, mm-hmm. whether it's domestically, internationally, cross border. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, depend on technology a lot. And technology is great. I mean, you need it nowadays in order to be resourceful and successful. You need technology. You know, it's, it's just a, a fact of life. But sometimes we we depend too much on it, and when you're talking, although we're neighbors, you're you know it's unlike Canada where we all speak English and you know we have the same language. In Mexico, you're talking about a difference in language. Mm-hmm. You're talking about a different metric system, yeah. uh, complications at the border because customs in Mexico is very very different from Canadian and U.S. customs, and you know I don't know wh- what it is nowadays on 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 the other side of the world with customs and all, but in, in Mexico, as close as it is, it's it's a hardship when you don't have the right tools. Mm-hmm. So I I decided, and, and this is all I know, Patrick. I've been doing this since the '80s, so yeah. I mean, it's not like I was going to open a restaurant or, or be successful at that, right? I figured this is what I know. I told my wife, I'm just going to get gambled it and uh, made, made several phone calls. And a, a lot of customers would, you know, they committed to to working with us if, you know, if we did, if we did this. And uh, the the mere fact that the group of people that I had worked with and trained and, and they supported us and they said, let's do it. I thought, I think I can make a difference by providing a solution not or not so much a solution 
but a commitment to the process. There we go. So we can be we we are very transparent on how we do it. We make sure we don't lose that contact, that human contact. Hey, and I tell everyone, if we need to pick up the phone, pick up the phone. That you know, don't depend on on Messenger or or uh, you know, we use a WhatsApp, that application WhatsApp so much. Right. You know, or pick up the phone or this, you know, from, you know, COVID was horrible. Uh, I lost a lot of good friends. Um, Sorry to hear that. But when you look at the, the the positive side of it, something that we were not accustomed to was doing this. Yeah. So it opened up another avenue. I said, we can see each other. Let's talk to our customers. Do a quick Zoom call. You know, do a FaceTime. But we have to be that difference maker. And and even though we're wrong or even though we failed in, in something, because there is no perfect company out there. Right. The thing is, accept the accountability of what happened and, and figure out a way to fix it. And that's where we've we've had that difference, you know. Um, I've always said I'm I'm not the cheapest in in the service that we provide, but my my service far exceeds what um uh, what others were are are doing, um, so and that's with, and and with that point, I'll, I'll not to cut you off, but kind of piggyback on that with the service. Um, visibility is a term that has probably been overused for the past probably three years. Whether you're a startup or a new product, or you don't understand what you're talking about, or if you truly do, visibility gets used a lot. Um, but I think that one of the from what you've told me, from what I've seen visibility into the into mexico ltl is a big part now i know that doesn't just mean tracking but what is that you know i i know that's a that's a claim that you guys have and and i know that it's there what other than just tracking are are you getting or offering within that service that that sets you apart the biggest challenge is the border um so once that once freight hits the border, the easiest thing that whether you're asset based or a brokerage or a logistics company, the easiest thing to do is say, hey, listen, I gave it to your broker. I'm waiting on them to resolve it for me. And then you just kind of do this and say, I'm, I don't know what else is going on. Well, what we do, what uh, you know, I don't uh, I'm sure some others do it and all. But I, you know, for a fact, the commitment that we have is we're talking every day to that Mexican customs broker, mm -hmm. you know, we have these timelines. If things don't happen within certain amount of hours or days, we're also communicating to the shipper, the consignee, everyone involved so that they know what's happening. And in hopes that through that, we can get the necessary links within that shipment to keep it moving. Uh, because other than, otherwise, if, if you don't do um, that type of commitment, you're just like everyone else. And and within that, I mean, what other than you? So obviously, it's the border that makes it difficult. But what what else is there as far as a, a difficulty in Mexico? And like we've talked about, it's not just a language barrier. It's not just, you know, a unit of measurement barrier. It's not just a cultural barrier. Like, you know, if I go state to state in the U.S. here, is that the same that we're dealing with from the different regions in Mexico, or is that also a challenge as well? well that's a great question, Patrick, because that's sometimes the, the issues where you get into some problems where, say, you go from L.A. to Cleveland, you know, it's within it's you, you know the route there's, mm -hmm. there's a way to get it there there's networks of of how they move their freight from one one into the other and it for the reality is it's based on distance right obviously right. your truckload carrier you want to get the best route fastest route that's going to get you there in mexico that's not the case okay sometimes the misconception is hey i'm the carrier or you're the you're the the one that's providing the logistic service you can tell me what's the best way to get it there through whichever gateway there is. And that's, that's not how it works. And that's, that's where you have to start your, your good communication, your good training, even you, the, before you agree to pick up that first shipment, because that if you don't, you're going to incur a lot of expenses from freight sitting at the border, warehousing demerges, uh, to having to reroute it to the correct gateway. So those are the things that you have to have a good conversation with whoever is 
requesting you to, or, you know, requesting for that service to be done, mm-hmm. make sure you understand everything that's involved. You know, who's the buyer in Mexico? If it's going into Mexico, who's the buyer? Who's the importer? Yeah. Have we spoken to them? Do they have a Mexican customs broker? Because that's going to dictate exactly how that freight has to get, has to get routed. So again, if you don't do those things, and and sometimes I've seen where you know you're requesting a rate. You know, I, I want to go Cleveland to say Chihuahua, Mexico. Sure. We assume, well, it's close to El Paso, so let's just use El Paso as a gateway. And, you know, if you divide that word assume up, you know what, what it translates into, right? I, sh- I sure do. And I've been one many a time, Dan. <laughs> you and I both, brother. <laughs> um, so you quote it and then all of a sudden it's time to move and you have those problems because, well, you already quoted me a rate. Yeah, but I didn't realize. And so there's a lot of conflicts that you can create. And um, one of the things I used to tell my sales group was, you know, securing new business sometimes is not the hardship. The hardship is maintaining it. Right. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that from the get-go, we ask the right questions. You know, make sure that we understand the requirements, The you know, what what is it they need? Are they having current issues? If you get all that out in the open from the, from the get-go, Things tend to 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 move a little bit uh, more smooth. Than- as my as my CEO would love to say, it's one of those things where you slow down to go faster. You know, you got to get that out of the way early and make sure there's an understanding. Especially, but it sounds like just moving to and from Mexico in general, you need to have that comprehensive conversation about what's involved because it, it's not as simple as point A to point B. No, it's not. And then once you get everything going and once everything is in place, it's it it, it does become um it, it can be simple, but you gotta you kind of gotta build the foundation for it, it sounds like. Yeah, you absolutely do. That way, you know, one everyone gets to know exactly what's going on and understands what everyone what role uh everyone has to play to to make it move forward and- with no problems. And within that, uh, and we, uh, I talked about visibility before, and uh, a big key issue here uh, that I've talked with people and I see every day is we have fraud going on a lot within logistics in Mexico. Is that the same? Uh, I would assume, or is it is it even more prevalent? Or what what does that look like from for you know for whether it's double brokerage or just people saying they're moving stuff when they're not? Any what do you have to say about that? You have to be very careful. And that's why a lot of asset-based carriers do not like working with 3PLs. Okay. Because they leave you in the dust. You know, you start moving, you know, especially from a truckload side, you move 10 truckloads, you know, at five, $6,000 a pop, that's 60 grand. And then all of a sudden the 3PL gets paid and they're gone. They, they, they're, they've disappeared and that truckload carrier is now. Ah, no, it's even, that's even, yeah, it's even kind of fraudulent, not on the low end, not on that, that X, but it's up in that middle tier where it's actually getting executed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the problem. So that's issue one. And even, even what we do is going back to you need technology, you (laughs) you know, they can give you a credit application. They can tell you they've been in business so many years, but you start looking for information on who they, they are and, We've come to find that a lot of these 3PLs are working out of a house. That's you know? what I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and um, and I can't remember his name, but it, he did a lot of lobbying, and I think it was for the TIA uh, group, where they did a bunch of searches on a bunch of these companies, and uh, like 40% of them were to this one house, or like a, a crap number of them were to this one house. And if anybody had just done like a Google search or maps or something, they'd have found it's clearly – some little house with a tree, not with a hidden, you know, uh, loading dock or a, a, a bunch of trucks in the backyard of it. And yeah, that uh, seemingly it doesn't matter where you are. That's that's become a thing. Do your due diligence, because even though technology is involved to make it easier, it also makes a lot of that fraud easier too. Right. Um can make yourself look like a really legitimate company, but really you're a fly by night, you know, only exists on the internet thing. Exactly. Then we also get approached by different companies where their, their email ends with a hotmail or a Gmail or, a, and you're like, yeah, we don't ever, we don't even respond to those because yep. there's nope, it's, it's a red flag. 
So there's a lot of things you do have to do due diligence in order to avoid getting yourself into into some problems. And if an issue does arise, you know, that, you know, we we did everything right, but then something, you know, because there's it's, so many. There's it's, just, I would just say it's logistics. So something goes wrong. It's not if, it's when and how do you handle it. And, and that's the thing. That's where you, that's where more than ever, you have to become that open book, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's with customs, with uh, you know, a legal entity, because, you know, I've always said my, my most comfortable pillow is having a good conscience, you know, and if, if you've not done anything wrong, then, Hey, listen, here's everything we're doing. This is all my, you know, what we, what we've got in yep. place. So, that way you can fix the issue and rectify it as quickly as possible. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot involved in, in, in the handling of the business. And, and that's, that's a, that again, Patrick, that's where I'm very, I have to say I'm very proud because we're, you know, we're, a, we're not a SIBA logistics. Though. Oh, we're not a Kuhn and Nago, these massive three PLs that are worldwide. We're, we're a family, small three PL, mm-hmm. uh, non-asset broker, but, I not only have our, our corporation set up in Texas to, for the U.S. side, I also have my company in Mexico. And, and does that, and does that set you apart from, yes, okay. Uh, from, from the small, uh, the, the, the three PLs that are floating all over the place, it does because to set up a company in Mexico is so challenging. Really? You can't, yeah, it's not like here where you, you, you go to the, courthouse and you file a name and make sure no one has that same name set up and boom you you got your your yeah. city no no mexico yeah we had to hire a law firm i have to have uh we had my wife and i had to do so much paperwork to be able to get it through and it took us about six months to finally get it done I had to fly into mexico city um that's where we have our our corporate location i was just say you didn't stay in your same hotel from back in the day no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. And, and, there, and, 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 and funny story why I didn't not, not because there's anything wrong with it. It's just my daughter loves swimming pools. Okay. So I knew I was going to have to get into a pool. So I had to find <sighs> one that had an indoor swimming pool. And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, and, and as we're off topic here, my, the one, my mom taught me many valuable lessons, but one always was no matter where you're going, Pack a swimsuit. It doesn't take up much room, and you never know when you're going to end up swimming. So my wife is always like, "Why do you have your swimsuit?" I'm like, doesn't take up any room. I'm barely packing anything, but nope. you never know. And for that exact reason, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's that's why we we stayed at that one. But uh, so yeah, so I have that the, the company that it's set up in Mexico, and that just allows for customers also to see how serious we are, mm-hmm. our, our commitment, because not not. It's not that the uh... yeah. It's not like a transient type thing where I could go in. I I'm not. I don't know if you're familiar, but like Halloween uh, spirit Halloween. I go into some random shopping mall here. The place has gone out of business. I'm going to set up, sell a few costumes for the next two months, and then disappear. Right. Like you know, yeah. It's it's not such a quick in and out. It's it's showing you've got you know you've got concrete down. You're gonna be there for the long haul. And if somebody has an issue here, come into the office and let's talk about it. Yeah, no, and plus, you know, how are you in order to pay the employees? It has to, it has to be a. Oh, that's a, yeah, you, great point. You can't pay from a forum. You can, but they get zero benefit. A whole, a whole lot more red tape takes longer to get the payment. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, and then the employees will see you as well. You not, you might not be here tomorrow. So why should I commit to you? So there's a lot that goes behind it, and that's one of the reasons why I did it. From also from a perspective towards the the customers wh- whoever's going to buy the service from us but also internally i want my group of people to see that we're in this for the long run i want them to feel comfortable that they see a career they see a future with what we're doing uh and and that's what i'm trying to do where we can just little little by little grow it into into a very stable which thank goodness we are uh, but something they can see themselves in the next five, 10, 15 years. And, and also with our partner carriers that I've dealt with in, in, in for so long, uh, they trust us. Yeah. They, they know we're here with them. We've been with them for a long and I've never defaulted on anything, um, that, ha- that would have created that, that conflict of, uh, of service. 
And, and speaking of service and the partner carriers and I, you know, and you're talking with us and you're a partner with Banyan or, you know, an, an option with Banyan because you guys have an API. What what services do you have going through that? What services does Arc Freight uh, allow for? Whether that like modes, you know, here's here's a chance to what what do you got? What do you got? If 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 someone needs it, what are you handling? Our strength is LTL. That's in okay. That's really our our forte. That's what we do day in day out. Uh, we can awesome. cover, we can cover you know eighty five ninety percent of the country on an LTL basis. So that's one of the reasons why I, I you know on our lit on our marketing material it'll tell you on there we've got at least access to seventy five terminals throughout Mexico. Uh, I've been able and I've been very successful at at uh, having multiple LTL carriers. Uh, or, you know, even, even truckload carriers where they'll pick up some stuff for me at a, at a place that the LTL carrier won't, we'll go drop it off at an LTL uh, carrier's facility. And there's no issues. They, they, they all know what we're doing. It's uh, that relationship you've built. It's that relationship yeah. and a lot of tequila. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when in but, doubt, if you don't have a relationship, yeah, you can substitute some tequila. That works. That yeah. like, you'll make, but, you'll make uh, friends out of everybody that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so doing those kind of things has has allowed us to be able to provide a very reliable LTL service in Mexico, and 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 that's where it, that's what helps us because customers in in the U.S. Mm-hmm. when they're contacting carriers for Mexico, you have a few that that have a good handle on it now. You know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, it, it wasn't like that, but for the most part, they. The LTL carrier in Mexico, they don't understand what an NMFC item is. They don't know what a class is. They just go by volume and weight. You know, ah, give me the bins, we're, we're, it, we're it's so simple here. Uh, no, but yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's just another one of those, uh, I don't know, barrier, but just differences is, is going to be a big key part. Um, and within that, it, is there so the near shoring that gets talked about? And I know you were at our our conference uh, for Connect Twenty Three, and there was a lot of clients that I have that I have never heard them use anything of the term Mexico. But then I said, "Hey, you know, we're talking about LTL to Mexico," and they're going, "Shut up about this other stuff. I want to go listen here." I I don't know if you were aware, but you were one of the most popular segments because I, I think to this point, and you're probably aware of this. Yeah, Mexico going in and out is not an easy task, and I think it's becoming more and more of a necessity with some of the nearshoring. I think uh, COVID and a response to that and not having your stuff as far away from it as maybe China or Europe or across the big uh, ocean liners. Um, what is that? Was that part of what brought arc as this is the time to do it or is that just a really awesome coincidental <laughs> bonus well you know near shoring is is a topic that's been happening since the early 2000s i think it uh, it first came up around 2003 2004 when they were they were they, they kept going back and forth with it uh but more so now than ever it's it's the reality i i ne- i had not really done you know set up arc because of it it's a great coincidence it's one of those things that you're like man it's it's a perfect storm right yeah um but yeah near shoring is something that more and more coming about uh you see more more companies that are seeing the benefits of having it uh so close versus and then we saw the 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 hardships everyone was going through at the ports when uh oh. They were backing up, you know, up to six months delays. It was a mess. It, it it just created such a such a logistical nightmare. Where here, it's just simple. You know, it's it's so much closer. You can hop on a plane and be anywhere in Mexico within four hours, five hours. You know, even with connecting flights. Um, wow. So it it does make a difference. Uh, and the now the thing is to make sure that you get in with that those right programs to be able to take advantage of the near shoring. So the near shoring actually makes sense. Isn't just, you know, more cost because it's a slight convenience now, or, 
you know, you're it because the the whole process, I mean, you're for some of these companies and some of these uh logistics providers, it's kind of starting from scratch because it's a completely new process. Yeah, no, it and it, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to look for that uh there was a, a document I had read where it said that nearshoring with Mexico was even going to be more profitable. Uh, and I'll, I'll read it here verbatim. It says, on top of that, recent research found that a good, that a good or a product made in China has roughly 4% of its positively impacting the U.S. economy. Okay. But a good or a product made in Mexico has about a 40%. Really? Well, that's pretty. So I, 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 when I read that, I'm like, Holy smokes! How? how? I mean, yeah, we won't we won't get into that because neither of us are uh, mathematicians or data analysts. But no, I I would, without going into that extreme, it makes sense because you know it's in one thought is that there's probably less of a change in hands of the currency within that same process because it is less distance. There should be less legs, um, at least from made product to actual, you know, store or distributor it ends up in. But it that it's awesome because you're kind of right here at the, I don't want to say right time because I mean, there's no bad time, but I know that when we talk to connect, you guys are really good at arc freight at not only talking early, like, Hey, I need to move something, but also kind of educating. Cause as we've talked about this, you know, I think at one point, who's your custom broker? Well, I, I don't know. I don't have one. Do I need one? Is that something that arc freight can help with too? Like where, where does this go? Do I have to have everything in line to before I come to talk to arc or you no. guys? Okay. There's, there's different, there's different ways, right? It could be a whole new startup project, you know, that you have nothing set in place. So we can have that communication of, all right, what are the areas? What are the lanes in Mexico? What's the product? How do you plan to ship it into Mexico or how, what's your, your program for purchasing the product out of Mexico? Uh, if they don't have a customs broker, I've got a relationship with a couple of uh, uh, customs broker at the borders of uh, Laredo. Mm -hmm. and, and I say Laredo lot because that's really the, the most, that's where most of the product is being imported, exported through okay. when it's, when it's in the interior of Mexico, you know, El Paso, Tijuana, those are primarily Maquila borders. Got you. Uh, so, so the majority of it is import exported to Laredo. It's the largest uh, inland port. Yep. Uh, so we can we can set up customs brokers. We can get you in front of the right customs brokers that'll help you both on the U.S. and on the Mexican side uh, to where you can start getting everything set up in place as well. And that's that's awesome. And even and even and I'm sorry to interrupt, but even if you do have your brokers, let's say it's something that's already moving, but you're having certain issues uh, with transit times. Um, visibility, what have you, right? If those customs brokers are already set in place, we just kind of work around that as well. We don't make any changes that's going to create uh, problems or rocking the boat. No, we work with any customs broker. We'll even reach out to them and make sure that we understand what they need, how they do it, so we can kind of maneuver into that same pattern, just make it more successful, make it a lot uh, easier in, in handling the freight. Well, that's that sounds like a, a great value add and just, you know, a reason for for being not only trusted, like you said, for those that might have a process in place, but those just starting from scratch and just starting to have those conversations. Because uh, like like I've told others here, like I can order a beer and ask where the bathroom is in Spanish, but God forbid I've got to, <laughs> you know, tell someone specifically where to drop something off. I'm I'm at a loss. And I know one of my clients is, you know, he's got two or three people on staff that can speak Spanish and he just has to kind of take it at a, um, a, a at a trust that like, you know, they're, they're handling it. And that's, that's all I know. So <laughs> I, I think um, what you guys are offering is great. And I'm very happy that, you know, through Banyan, we have a partnership uh, and, you know, within the connection, what did, did you guys, you know, you're at our connect 23 conference, you know, what do you guys think of uh, Banyan and the partnership? And uh, it, what did you see there? Like you said, it was your first opportunity um, to get to go to one of these things instead of probably just be mentioned or talked about without actually being able to participate in it. Oh, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I really did. And uh, what I started understanding and learning is 
with ARC is the importance and the value of having someone that's technology driven that can help you with that connectivity with the TMSs and understanding how to properly rate track your shipments so that you know the audits are done right with what you're paying versus your profitability so all that is really key and it's important and for us to be part of it and I I, I was I was telling Brian I I just don't have enough words of gratitude uh because I mean, it just puts us at a whole different level being part of this group. It really does. And, and just in the short time, the great conversations that I've had, just like, you know, James, the, the, the one that you turned me yeah. on, to, great people and they understand how freight moves. So that, that's also important, you know? So it's, uh, I see nothing but good results out of this and to be part of it, um, from where we started and where we're at. Patrick, you have no idea how, how grateful I am. Well, it it really goes both ways because, like I said, the amount of there was people I, I it never came up, but then you start saying, "Hey, I have API LTL to Mexico. Do you want to learn more about that?" And it's like I said, stop talking about the other stuff. Let's let's go have that conversation. And that's so it's an amazing as anyone who's a salesperson, especially you know account manager. Me, I'm really more of trying to be a consultant or a client advocate for. Hey, this might not be a fit, but let's go see if that if that's something that makes sense. It's a great option to start talking about. So the gratitude goes both ways. Um, and within this part of our conversation, because they do keep me to a time limit here, I always like to use the platform. And for all 19 and a half people listening, here's my opportunity for you, Dan, to to talk to that platform, whether that's a message about ARC Freight Services, about US and Mexico logistics, or just about something you feel strongly about. Here's your chance to, to here's your soapbox. What do you got? <laughs> Oh, I, I think we, uh, I, I, uh, we, we had a great conversation about everything that we do, but you know, if, if we are just given a one opportunity, uh, really for freight moving into or out of Mexico on the LTL side of it, you know, if you know, let's have start developing those, that trust, that conversation on what is required, uh, from us to be able to help and provide that, that, uh, that service to, to the customers. And the biggest thing here uh, out of everything is, yes, we, we want to make sure that we're able to separate ourselves from whoever is offering this in Mexico because, um, uh, it came out while we were there. Uh, the API invoicing is great. I mean, the API, uh, uh, rates are great. Yep. But they were saying, Hey, we also want, uh, what is it? E- EDI, ED- EDI for the two tens and the freight right. bills. Yeah, it's exactly. There. Uh, my IT guy told me that that should be done probably sometime next week. And so, you'll hold him to that. Cause IT guys love being held to that deadline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I could have said it'll be done mañana, you know, <laughs> he'd but, come uh, into this room while you were talking. If you said that. Yeah. Right. Um, but we, we are a small company. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a small family owned uh, little logistics company, but our our service is as professional as you can imagine from any other big big carrier out there or any any logistics company out there. So all I ask is, give us that one opportunity. You know, if we're giving that one opportunity, you know, we're going to try our best to become that fit that will help you continue to be successful with with mexico this this is what we've done for the last 20 or more years um and we don't have all the answers we you know i'm not going to sit here and say we're perfect and you know we we, we're going to have our our share of of little issues that come up but i'm we're never going to hide and and we're never going to come back and and not help in getting it resolved you know it's because that's really what what commitment is all about so and Dan, that's extremely powerful and something that that resonates here. And uh, like Dan said, if you're looking for anything uh, over to Mexico, if you're curious about it, if you're starting a new project, or if you're looking to make some changes to your current process, please uh, talk to somebody at Bannon, talk to Dan. Um, Dan, what's, uh, what's the website if they want to get some more information? It's uh, ARCFRTSVC.com. 
All right. And we'll I'm sure we'll have a, a link to that too, but please uh, have a conversation with my man, Dan. He is one of the, the great guys to talk to. He, he'll do right by you. Uh, we at Banyan really, really appreciate Dan. You taking the time to talk with me here on a, another episode of Banyan Tire Tracks and uh, look forward to a great partnership and uh, a lot more future conversations, both on the air and uh, off the air when we're uh, signing some deals and getting some people moving in the right direction. Patrick, it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks, Dan. Have a great one. We'll we'll talk soon.